thank you very, very much for this uh, fabulous film. Um, it's uh, a beautiful work. Uh, let me ask you right off the bat, is this your first documentary? Is this, you've been in this business for a while? This is our third, uh, third. feature doc. Okay. Yeah, and it took uh, seven years to make. So I was gonna ask that question. So uh, the other two docs before this, were they about dance? Uh, they weren't about dance. The first, it's about bodies in motion, but not about dance. Our first doc was um, about an Olympic figure skater named Johnny Weir called Pop Star on Ice. And then our second doc was about, um, it, it was called uh, American Cheerleader. And it's about, uh, it's the real life version of Bring It On. <laughs> Two teams competing against each other at nationals. Uh, unbelievable. Um, so this, this, how did you get onto this one? What made you want to do this one? Uh, so we are ballet fans, and we had been going to uh, American Ballet Theater for many years. And I think what, what drew us was really Marcelo, his personality on stage. And in one particular run, we saw him dance with different ballerinas in the same ballet, and they all danced the best we'd ever seen them dance. And we were trying to figure out why that was, and we were fascinated by that. So I think that that was a spark for it. Um, and we reached out to him on Facebook and asked if we could have lunch with him, and he said yes. So uh, Facebook, then lunch, then the Kickstarter campaign? We actually filmed with him for, we started very slowly, filmed with him for about three years, and using our own funds. And then we, had, then we launched the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, which got us through the rest of production. When you started, did you anticipate it was going to be seven years of filming? No, we did not. So how did that work out? Why, did, why was it seven years of filming? It was seven years because we were, um, first of all, handpicking which performances we would film. And second, because as we all know in doc filmmaking, it's uh, start and stop, start and stop, depending on the funding. And part, of, and part of the time we were, we were in production on other things that were paid jobs. So we were either making a television show or we were shooting American Cheerleader. Uh, so we were trying to fit shooting this film in when we were not doing those jobs. Okay, so you had to pick the performances, but that meant you had to do an awful lot of travel. Was that the plan from the jump? Was that you would see these performances in different cities? Um, I think it was... Uh, it wasn't so much that it was that we didn't want to show three Swan Lakes. So where was he dancing Giselle? Where was he dancing La Bayadere? And it just so happened that they were in different incredible cities. Um, so we were, we were spoiled that way. And we were also able to do that because, uh, you know, the two of us basically did everything, which meant that we didn't arrive at a theater with a crew of 10 people and it just felt like you were overwhelming the, the you know, the staff at a theater. Uh, it also meant we had greater a greater intimacy, which I hope you feel when you see the film. You feel like you're in the dressing room with Marcelo and he's talking to you. You're in the room with him. So there's an immediacy that I think we were able to achieve because it was just the two of us. And the camera just became like something he, he forgot was there in a way. Well, he was very, very natural, but everybody was in, in the piece. Um, the, the wonder, one of the one, many wonderful things about it was the testimonials from the other ballerinas, which um, in addition to the instructors, his instructors through time had always talked about how, to your point there originally, was why were these ballerinas so much better? It's because he's such an amazing partner. And that's a rare gift among, among you, know, you don't hear people saying that Nuriev was a great partner. You know what I mean? But he's a spectacular dancer, but also really notable for his, for his, his partnering ability. So I think he really brought that out. And that goes to what you were talking about in the first place to begin with, is, which is why are they so good? Um, so uh, it, do you get to, I mean, when, when he goes from these places to place, like you say, okay, he's gonna be doing Bayadair in Tokyo. And then do you know at that point who his ballerina is gonna be? Does he know? Usually we know ahead of time. Uh -huh. And that also made a difference because we didn't want to repeat ballerinas uh -huh. uh, to show our point. Right. Um, so we did know ahead of time. Uh, in, in Brazil, that was, uh, Dorote was a last minute replacement. So that was the only case where we didn't know. I just want to say very quickly what an honor it is to be here with all of you uh, at this incredibly prestigious event. I want to say thank you to Jackie, Karen, Jamie, and especially um, everyone who was involved in the festival. So thank you for having us. <laughs> well, 
it's, it, it, it works both ways. It works both ways because we're really grateful to have you here I, 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 and to make such a beautiful film. So the storyline, of course, that starts in the beginning and has us hanging on edge the whole time is, is his dad going to show up? Is his dad not going to show up? So how hard was it to get his dad to come on camera? In, and how long ago was that when he sort of copped to the fact that he often says he's going to come and doesn't come? And he sort of threw in that little for personal reasons, and we're not sure what those are, but was it hard to get him to come on camera? Actually, it wasn't hard. Um, he's very supportive of Marcelo. I think his his feeling is that that is in the past, that that um, what the way he helped Marcelo become who he is is in the past, and uh, he has a new family, and he's moved on from that, and I think maybe the pain of, of uh, connecting with that is, is too much for him. And I think what, what is challenging about the films we make is that we make a lot of films about people who are currently dancing or currently cheering or currently uh, figure skating or, or were at the time. And you don't have the benefit of, of the person being 90 years old and you're looking back on the career and everything kind of fits neatly into a narrative. You have the messiness of real life. There aren't, there isn't perfect closure in all of our lives, you know? There isn't always a clear answer, and I think sometimes, you know, Hollywood films will provide that, but documentaries, you know, allow for the complexity of we don't know why. And even Marcelo doesn't know why, and maybe even the father doesn't know why. He just can't bring himself to, to uh, connect with the past in that way again. Well, I think, and that brings out the humanity of the, of, the, of the piece, too, and that's what documentaries do, the great documentaries like this, bring it down to beyond the, the ultimate performer that's living a life larger in, in larger terms than the rest of us, and is therefore somehow superhuman and maybe not as human as we are, but then we get to the physical pain. Uh, that in any film about ballet, you always get to that part because it is so taxing um, and it is such a such a demanding thing on the body. And then people performing through it, um, Misty Copeland and uh, and which we had the documentary here before last year, and uh, it's just it's kind of remarkable. And yet beyond the, that, there's the emotional pain. What it takes to go through all this for, at age 13, not speaking the language really, and coming to Florida and no parents and and probably not going home for Christmas. I mean, it's just like, it's sort of incredible. And then going to, and turning down the first ABT um, contract and going to Paris, but getting better and so forth. You really watched the film. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're paying attention, but I'm just saying that the, the, the humanity of it is that you, throughout, you always feel Marcelo's pain about not having his father there, and it comes back and comes back. And when he's with his father, you can see that his father understands that to a certain degree. So it becomes even more perplexing. But as you say, this is what documentaries do that Hollywood movies aspire to but don't actually get to. Marcelo said something really interesting when we sent him a link. The film was done and we sent him a link and he watched it with his mother and his sister. And his sister asked him, do you really feel that way? And he said, yeah, about his father. Because that's not her experience. She grew up with him. He left home when he was 13. He didn't have that nuclear family around him. And I think it's it's something that's really lacking for him. So even for his sister, who's you know he he's in touch with often, he sees often, it was a it was a bit of a surprise for her. So I think um, yeah, I think that's always going to be maybe always going to be a part of his life. I don't know, um, I, but it's part of I think it's something that we can all identify with. We always want our parents to be proud of what we've done, or to somehow make them proud. And I think that's something that that makes him more human in spite of his superhuman talent. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, the, the, a question about um, Paolo, his uncle Paolo, who had died in 93. And so who was he talking to? Was he talking to Wolf? Was he talking to the, the other partner? Yes, he was talking to Uncle Wolf, who uncle was the Wolf. partner of Paolo. OK, so that, that was amazing. But I think that that's another aspect I wanted to touch on, because of that was a, a gay couple that had reared him into ballet and other things. And his comfort with coming out as a male ballet dancer, which is like it's always the speculation, but it's never, you know, and, and that was an interesting aspect of the, the, the furor that came out when an actual male, male ballet dancer copped to being, you know, gay. So 
and but yeah, he he was so natural with that that I think that was uh, that was a wonderful moment in the film when he was talking about he wasn't going to be a homosexual pirate he was going to be you know <laughs> a very straight pirate and uh, but uh, again it goes to um, a kind of acceptance uh, of of another another choice whatever it is and and his ability to it's an it's a role I'm going to act a role and he's obviously able to do that convincingly and that. To me, as, as an actor, um, it was really impressive that all the people that gave testimonials to him talked about his ability to act, mm -hmm. to partner, to act, his technique, mm -hmm. and it's the whole package, as they said. And you can see it in the dances. You can see the emotional connection with the ballerinas mm -hmm. and, and the depth of feeling that goes into these roles. So I, I don't know. I think, I think you caught it all. I mean, is there anything you, you wish you'd caught that you didn't catch or that you had to edit out? I think we're pretty happy. Yeah? Yeah. Good. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> uh, I would just say that Marcelo really is the way he is in the film. He's very natural. He's very, I think it's uh, when somebody's very comfortable with themselves and sure of themselves, not in a cocky way, but just they're, they're, they are who they are. Uh, you know, you come out as gay because that's who you are. Right. What's the big deal? Uh, and he is very comfortable in his body. He's very comfortable holding a woman and making her look fantastic. Uh, there's no feeling of, of, you know, my ego is diminished because you're the star in this particular moment in the pas de deux. So, um, and I think everybody at American Ballet Theatre will tell you that Marcelo is universally liked. He's a likable yeah. guy. He's, he's not a, you know, He's not a diva. Not a diva. Right. And I think that that goes to the in performance as well as as a human being is, is the way that he connects to other people. That, and that's what we deal with in, in documentaries and in life and everything is, is how do we connect. And connecting in performance is one thing and connecting on, the, on a regular level. And that, and that lack of connection with his father is uh, obviously the, all the more painful because of that. Um, so just to, for all of us that are wondering, what's the injury update? How's he doing? Physically, at the moment, he's in great physical shape, and um, you could see uh, from Labaya Dare he 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 has started to what we call downshift mm -hmm. roles, um, but he's still performing uh, with American Ballet Theater, and he is still performing principal roles. He will be performing in the spring. No plans to retire. Looks great. When was great. his 20th anniversary? Was that just last year? It was May of last year. Of May of this year. May of this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's spectacular. Thank you so, so much for such a wonderful film. Thank you for having thank us. You. And thank you for coming. Thank you so much.